Going back to the oil and gas space now, Harsh Vardhan Dole, Senior Vice President of Institutional Equities at IFL, joins us to tell us what he expects from the oil and gas sector in uh, quarter three. Uh, Harsh, thanks a lot for joining in. First, if you can give us your overarching view on what to expect from the sector and then what are your top picks in the sector this quarter as well? Sure, thanks. See, I think uh, relative to uh, last year as well as the second quarter, uh, the macro environment uh, was less benign. For example, the GRMs have kind of you know weakened uh, and, and at the same time, there has been moderation in the marketing margin. Uh, so that will definitely be high on the earnings of the sector both uh, downstream as well as upstream. Uh, I think uh, the positive way to look at it is with respect to what had happened last year, the numbers will actually fare out phenomenally well for particularly the downstream companies. So if I were to take a holistic view, uh, while the numbers may seem to be quite disappointing on a sequential basis, I think uh, given uh, a lower base versus uh, you know what these companies have been going through, uh, I think the performance should be quite impressive if you evaluate on a standalone basis. Uh, mm. On the same thread, I think the city gas distribution companies like uh, you know IGN and Gujarat Gas will actually uh, report a reasonably good quarter. I'm not too sure about you know some of the other companies who are actually sitting on a very high base of margin. But in general, for CGD, uh, volume should be quite reasonable and there should be uptake in the margins. So the gas companies actually stand out very well in the third quarter. Uh, right. Reliance is, is basically a very peculiar case whereby uh, the O2C business is likely to be weaker, but that will be more than offset by strength in the ENP as well as the B2C segment. Okay, I wanted to talk a little more about Reliance actually because the stock in the last one month has gone up 10% and you're expecting it to be a flattish quarter this time around. Uh, but do you think that the consumer businesses, which have been at a, growing at a very steady clip, right, both geo as well as uh, the, uh, the retail space, do you think they could continue to gain traction, assuming more importance in the numbers this time and perhaps giving it that incremental upside? Well, that's what we are hoping, that, uh, you know, festive season should have gone reasonably well for them. Uh, and there are, there are uh, you know, traction in the subscriber additions as well, for which both uh, geo and retail uh, should continue to deliver uh, the way we are forecasting. On a sequential basis, uh, we are, for example, retail, uh, you know, trying to pen in something like 3 to 5% on a sequential growth, uh, which assumes uh, linearity in terms of sale and flattish margin profile. So, hypothetically, if the operating leverage kicks in, there is a good chance for an upside surprise, which is what will keep the away. Mm, okay, a good chance for an upside in uh, Reliance, which is what you're looking at. All right, gas utility companies, a quick word on that, Gale, uh, Petnet Energy, I think you mentioned it briefly, but do uh, you think that the margins would uh, normalize this time around? What are you expecting in terms of the operational performance and what can we look forward to on the stocks? So, Gale in particular is not a simple direct play on LNG because it has got quite a few moving parts. The core business, which is the natural gas transmission, will do quite steady uh, with, you know, 3 to 4% uh, volume growth and benefits of, you know, tariff revision. Uh, where we are uh, unsure about is the commodity business, the petrochemical business, because the margins have actually come off the cliff. Uh, even on the sequential as well as YO basis, margins are down in double digits. So we are hoping that the company is able to source gas at a much competitive price and throw some surprises. Otherwise, uh, you know, uh, the much of the weight lifting will be done by the LNG trading business where Gale has const uh, constantly been surprising the street and which has been the sole reason for the earnings upgrade. Mm, okay, that's but, on Gale. Got, yeah, go ahead. Petronet LNG, you were saying? Petronet LNG, again, it's, uh, you know, as of now, just two terminals operating. And I think the benefits of uh, lower natural gas prices should start occurring to them, uh, which is reflected in the terminal utilization. And therefore, uh, you know, the earnings that we are forecasting are, uh, you know, close to about 4% uh, on four percent on a sequential basis, uh, which to me is quite uh, reasonable. Okay, finally, a word on these standalone refiners like MRPL. Do you expect uh, a hit on their profitability as well because of the lower GRMs that we are seeing uh, quarter on quarter? Of course, uh, there will be an impact uh, on the margin profile of the standalone refiners. 
And given the fact that their earnings are very sensitive to the underlying GRMs, there will be uh, volatility in their earnings. And that is the reason why as a house, we've always believed that the best way to play the whole refinery theme is by owning the integrated players like HPPP and IO, which actually remain our preferred picks in the sector. Okay, <clears throat> Harsh, we leave it there. Thank you very much for joining us and uh, running us through your expectations uh, for the quarter from the oil and gas space. Thanks indeed.